This is The Lockpicking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is an incredible piece of technology called a box lock. It's a relatively expensive internet-enabled padlock that's designed to protect home deliveries that you get from Amazon, UPS, FedEx, and the United States Postal Service. Once this lock is set up through your smartphone, a delivery driver can use it to scan a package by pushing this button on the top, which in turn activates a scanner on the bottom. Once your package is scanned, this lock will connect to the internet through your home Wi-Fi and confirm that the package is addressed to you and that it's listed as being out for delivery. If so, the lock will open and the delivery driver can place your package in whatever this lock secures. The lock also includes with it a master barcode that I will not show you on this video, but this can be used to open the lock at any time. You can even use a picture of it that you take on your smartphone. Now with the smartphone app, what you can do is create additional barcodes that you can give to other people. For instance, you can give one to a neighbor that will only work for a limited time. So you do have a lot of flexibility with this. My personal opinion is that from a technology standpoint, this is actually a really impressive product. But therein lies one of the problems with this lock, and frankly most of the latest generation of high-tech locks. You see, those with the electronics expertise required to build them tend not to have a background in creating security devices. As a result, these new high-tech locks are usually built more like a consumer electronics product than like a padlock. And unfortunately, this lock is no exception. Using a couple of simple hand tools, I can disassemble this product quickly and quietly while it's still locked. So let me show you how that's done. If we look at the bottom where the scanner is, you can see there are two holes. Now looking deep inside of there, you can't see any screws, but that's because they're stuffed with little pieces of foam. So I'm gonna use a piece of wire and pull that foam out. And once we get that foam out, we have access to two Torx number 10 screws. Now it's the security variant that requires a Torx bit with this tiny little hole in it. Frankly, those are the only kind of bits I buy because the security variant of the bit will work in both the standard and the security fasteners. Screws are fairly long, but we can get them out pretty quickly. Let's see. I think both of them are probably loose, just one of them's not coming out. Now, once we do that, you can see this whole thing comes apart. Right now, I could actually just yank on this and pull this entire assembly out. However, because I don't want to break those wires that hold the top section to the bottom section, I'm going to be just a little bit more careful. What we need to do is pull this bottom section out. And once we do that, let me disconnect the wires holding the top section and bottom section together. Okay. Looking inside of there, you can see a lithium ion battery, and then a couple of wires go to the top section. That top section we can pull out, and then we see four Phillips screws on the back. Okay, once we have those screws out, we should be able to take this lock apart and open it up. Okay, there we go, the lock is pretty much apart. Let me just 
pry the motor and actuator out. There we go. So it doesn't take too long to open this up. And frankly, I could have done it a lot faster if I wasn't concerned about permanently breaking this lock. So as you saw, this lock I think is built more like a cell phone than a padlock. Normally this would be enough for me to write the lock off altogether, but given the niche use of this lock, the lack of alternatives, and the fact that it is frankly just better than nothing, I can't discount it altogether. However, users should be aware of this design flaw and also should consider making it a little bit more secure by filling these bottom holes with epoxy. Likewise, the maker of this lock would do well to consider improving the design by inserting one of the assembly screws through this shackle hole in the top. It's a relatively minor change that would have been obvious to a real lock designer if they had consulted with one. In any case, that's all I have for you today on this box lock. If you do have any questions or comments about it, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.